Okay, thank you for joining me. Uh, today, I'm going to be stripping down one of these. This is a Phantom 2 Vision camera, the Egg camera, or the FC200 as it's commonly called. Uh, the advantage this has over the Phantom 2 Vision camera, uh, sorry, the Phantom 2 Vision Plus camera even, is that all the electronics are contained inside. Wi-Fi, FPV, SD card, etc, etc. And the quality, I think, is about the same. Might be wrong. Some people disagree. Some will say it's got a better camera. I don't know for definite. I've never flown a PTV+. Plus. Uh, anyway, so we're going to open it up. And the reason I'm going to open it up is because if, like me, at some point you're going to want to add external antennas, uh, you're going to need to be able to get to either the original antennas or actually the place on the board where the antenna cables connect to. So the first thing you need to look at is well, first thing I want to point out is this switch. This is a switch so you can press it once to take a picture, hold it for two seconds to start recording, and press it again to stop recording. Why is it there when you've got the app? Well, if your app stops working and uh, you need to stop recording, you can press it. If you just turn the quad off with it recording, of course, we know it corrupts the video file. It may also be because DJI wanted some way of testing them on the workbench. I don't know. Anyway. So to crack on, this one has already been opened by the way, uh, there's no screws in it, so I'll just point out where the screws would go. Uh, the reason why it's been opened is because it wasn't working when I got it and I thought I'd look inside it. And I uh, couldn't find what's wrong with it, so I'm assuming it's a blown board. So to start with, there are four screws here. These are 1.5mm hex screws. Once you have managed to get the four screws out, you have to be very gentle because they've got quite soft heads and uh, they can... Um, round um, wear out the heads if they do you've basically got no chance of getting them out unless you've got a, a really fine drill and some way of holding it perfectly flat while you drill them out so good decent pressure on the screwdriver make sure you get a good quality one and a half mil hex and slowly undo them uh, evenly uh, just to get the pressure to take off or whatever so once you get the four screws out this body comes apart now turn the camera upside down squeeze and you'll find the bottom half comes away like that. There's a little uh, little button inside there. You'll notice it locates. Uh, push that up. Pops out. You've got four little lugs that locate into four little holes there. If you don't push it in the right way, it will not work properly. So you need to make sure you sit it in so it moves freely. Right, we don't need that for the moment. That's what you're left with when you take the top cover off. Now, inside there, you'll just see at the bottom there are two screw holes. You're going to need a quite a long reach magnetic screwdriver to take those out. Once you've taken those out, the front part lifts out like that and the bezel comes off. There's a little rubber bung goes around the outside to keep the camera in place. Put that to one side. Now, this bit's loose. You can, if you want, undo the little clip there, but I don't really see the point for it. To take the back plate off, just gently give a little bit of pressure all the way around. And it should pop out. It's usually best if you've got a, a flat blade screwdriver. There we go, that's one, two. That comes off, so that's that one. And as you can see, oop, that bit fell out. Let's just put that back in while no one's looking quick. Ha ha. Oop, let's pop that back in there. Okay, so you're only left with access to the back cover. And you can see there are four boards. One, two, three, four. I'm going to guess the top one is probably FPV because you've got the camera attached to it. It's also got the manual record button there you can press. Turn it upside down. To take this board out, there are four screws. One screw, two screw, three screw, four screw. Undo those. And that will just lift out. They are all just these push fit type connectors. So each board is joined to each other with these. And there's your SD card slot there. So if you happen to have an SD card that's stuck in or something's not quite right with it, that's how you get to the SD card slot. I'll we'll take that one out, and you're left with the next board. On this board, there are two screws one there and one there. Again, once they're undone, you can wiggle them out. Now this board has, as you can see, 
the fan attached to it. That's a little whirring sound you can hear that helps keep the quad cool. As I say, I've taken this apart before, so that's the reason why that's not actually fixed out the bottom. That board will just have to hang loose over the side, because that fan would normally be in there. So leave that hanging down for a second. The next board will have two post screws, that's like little posts with screw holes in that the screws from the other one will screw into either side there, one and two. And again, all you need to do is take the flat blade and just gently wiggle it out. So that's board number three. Last board is this one. You see it's got a little heat sink all around it there to help dissipate the heat. Uh, and that has two screws at the back, one there and one there. Once you've undone that, you can lift out the entire chassis. That leaves you with the fan. Now there's a little bar here, which is tip that out. That little bar there will normally sit across these two posts and hold the fan in place. There is glue on it. So if you want to take the fan out, you need to get a sharp knife and gently scrape away all the glue until that bar comes off. And then gently lift the fan up again. You've got to be really gentle, because if you don't, you end up with a fan that looks like that. Yes. I broke well actually it's not broke, it's actually still the usable fan, it does still spin round actually if I put power to it. So it's not broken, broken, it's just not in the best of health. Now this is the bottom board, as you can see there are your two aerial connections. Now your aerials normally sit either side one and two. I've already taken these out because they're in the quad ready for me to connect up. What I've done is, uh, instantly, is the reason I've taken these out is I put these two inside the quad where the Phantom 2 Vision Plus would normally have its Wi-Fi aerials because when this is on my 2D gimbal, this side here is blocked by the motor and I'm losing range, um, not as great as it was when it was on original stock, uh, the original stock gimbal. That's the original stock gimbal there. Camera would sit on there obviously underneath the quad. And as you can see the aerials would have been out of the side and it would have been free to transmit its signal. But sitting on a 2D gimbal like mine, as I say, this side's blocked and I lose the signal strength. So all you need to do obviously is just pop off these two little pigtail connectors. These are UFL female, I think they're called. I'm not sure, UFL, FL or something. Um, and add on your own. Now, Ben7 did a video about stripping the camera down. Well, actually about adding aerials, not about doing all this. And he was talking about bending these little tags here. Because when you put the board in, you can see that those little posts there stop you from actually pulling the pigtail connectors off the board. And change them out. So yeah, it's about bending and whatnot. For the sake of, it's probably about eight screws, two posts. You know, and the, the, it's the, the the modular. I mean, I could put this back together. You know, on the table here, put that board in there like that, and then let's put that board. Um, so that one goes that way. And put that in. Oop, let's figure it in. When they go together, you can hear them click and lock together. And then last but not least is that one, that sits on top, you'll hear the, as it all clips together. Now in essence that's what's inside the camera. There's not much to it, to say just four boards. Your know, Wi-Fi board, FPV, power board, other board, control board, I, I don't really know what. So yeah, that's how you take apart a Phantom 2 Vision camera if you want to get to the aerials underneath. Put it back together obviously, it's just a reverse. Um, put it all back together again. You can put it all back together board by board, just plugs back in again. When you're going to put this piece, I'll just tuck the mega leads out of the way for a second. Do it on there, that down there out of the way. Oh, it's fall off. Oh, it's fall off. Oh, well, that's one area less. Before you put this back on again, grab your bezel. Front part. The DJI logo, when you're looking at the camera, goes to your left. So I'll just pop it on there first of all, make sure it's straight, and then you have to wiggle and jiggle to get it back in again. This little cover pops on there. 
It is fiddly. Don't get me wrong. It's not something you you can do if you're not nimble fingered. Put that in there. Put that. This one, by the way, when you're putting this lens back in, there are two little locating lugs. I'll show you those. I can't quite get a good close for that. You can see a little locating lug. So it helps to keep it in exactly the right place on there. Oh, got a bit of plastic. The fan would obviously be mounted. Take your cover and you have to gently wiggle it into place. And then make sure that it's sat nice and flat. The DJI logo doesn't go at the top uh, because the top parts, uh, the little top clip here is wider than the side ones so it, it just wouldn't sit right. When you're happy it's all correct, take your back plate, small little pegs, the ones there at the top, put them in and you should be able to hear a little bit of a, oh most important thing, the power switch, make sure it's in the right position. In this case, all the way across, hold it with your finger, take the back of it, line it up and give it a gentle bit of a shove in. There we go, you hear the clicks it goes in. And now my little front bits popped out. Obviously, once you've done that bit, put the screws in. I haven't done, put the screws in, so mine's just moved a little bit. Bing! Oh. So that go with that bit, put that back on there like that. Pop that in there, oh, little luggies pop in the lens part. Yeah. Like I said it is, uh, it is a bit of a fiddly job to get it all back in again. Yeah. Come on, you little nuisance. No, I didn't. I sensed that. There we go, right. So once it's all back in again, let's just tuck that uh, little fan down the side for a minute. Do do so it's not in the way. Okay, now then, putting the bottom bit on requires a little bit of finesse because obviously you've got that little button there. So, just a gentle tip up. Off up the main body, get that into, into view there. And simply squeeze together. It should all clip and lock. So you basically hold it, and nothing comes apart. Pop your four screws back in, and your cameras all back together. Most people route the uh, Wi Fi cables out through the bottom vent there. And, I mean, you are welcome to notch the side if you like, or if you want to find some alternative path for the cables to come out from. And they do fit in there quite well and go through quite uh, quite easy. Uh, your choice how you, uh, how you route your cables. So that's it. Taking apart and putting back together a Phantom 2 vision camera. Should take you no more than 10 minutes, uh, 15 if you're taking pictures or watching my video while you're doing it. Anyway, that's all for me. Uh, if you uh, like this, then please subscribe. I've got, I think it's 33 subscribers, uh, slowly, slowly gaining numbers. And uh, like the video as well. Uh, I don't really have likes on my video. If people watch them, uh, there are not many likes, I don't think. Perhaps they didn't like them, I don't know.